tonight I'm going to be talking uh, about risk reward and I stress this is not a trading strategy it's not a rigid discipline even it's a, it's a mindset it's something that I'd like you to be thinking of as part of your thought process around trading around structuring trading and you may actually find it also pretty useful when analyzing performance um, over a series of trades and it's important that we understand this is to be taken um, across a batch of trades where sometimes you may feel your trade ideas have been good but your PL just doesn't reflect that so uh, maybe we can help there as well very simply put um, what is risk reward well as we always state you, you should never trade without protection i.e your stop loss and your stop loss actually like insurance is, is a bit of a premium and, and if hit um, it's a cost to your bottom line and clearly uh, when trading to offset that because we know we're not going to get every trade right to, so to offset those losses we need to be um, taking some profit on trades as well and the difference between you know what you're prepared to risk on a trade and, and certainly over a batch of trades um, versus what you aim to make on you know the same trade uh, will be your risk reward and if I look on the right hand side here and where I'm going to do the case study on, on cable, you know, we're going to look at selling cable. So I've got a, you know, a sell entry of 125.80. And, you know, as those trades play out, of course, I then look at my stop loss. Well, you'll notice uh, on all three situations on the right hand side, my stop loss is at the same place. And that's because, you know, in this instance, I'm probably looking at a slightly, you know, longer term trade, maybe a few days. Um, but we could even look at this intraday as well. That stop loss is where I feel is the right place where my risk all of a sudden becomes wrong. Because if we start moving through those levels, my idea is wrong. From a technical perspective, it probably looks wrong. So that stays rigid. I'm up there at 127.30. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit later as to why that's there. So once I've got my stop loss in place, we start then looking at where would I take profit? Now, if in that situation, as we're pointing to there, I was to take profit at 125.05, I'm risking 150 ticks, but I'm going to take my profit after 75. So really, I'm kind of two to one in a negative fashion here. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, to make half of what I'm prepared to lose. In the middle one there, I've got a one-to-one -one where my take profit is at 150 pips away, and that matches where my stop loss is. And on the right-hand side, I'm looking to make doubles, so I've got a two-to-one risk reward. So on the left-hand side, I'm, I'm really negative in terms of risk reward. I'm fairly neutral in the middle, and on the right-hand side, I've got a nice positive risk reward and potential return on my trades. And as you see, really what we should be doing is trying to avoid too many of those short-term trades where we, we, we may be rushing to taking profit, um, you know, and we're okay if we're taking, you know, kind of one-to-one -one risk, but we want to get as many trades as we can into that positive territory. And we'll see later. Don't get fixated on these individual ratios because, um, you know, that's not what we want to get bogged down in. It's the concept that you should be understanding and bringing that into your thought process as you trade. So if I can just look at these two, and again, I'm just going to bring this out in, in very, very simple terms. If we have that negative risk reward there um, of 0.5 to, to 1, i.e. we're prepared to risk more than we're actually prepared to take profit, I'm looking to lose £200 every time I get a trade wrong, and I'm only taking a profit of £100 when it goes in my favour. So over a batch of 10 trades, 100 trades, I need to get over 66% of my trades right before I even break even. If I take that middle instance, 200 versus 200, I've got to get over 50% right of my trades before I break even. And on the right-hand side, which is the, the end where we want to be pushing towards, I'm obviously looking to make double what I'm prepared to lose. And that makes life a lot easier for me because I'm not going to get all my trades right. So I can actually get less than 35% of my trade ideas um, you know, to be winners, and I can still be successful. I will stress 
on the top left there, you know, nobody broke the bank by taking a profit regularly. What I don't want you to do is get completely fixated on this. I want it to be in the back of your minds when you structure your trades. And it may also help influence you sometimes when you take profit and maybe give you a bit more patience to say, do I need to take profit here? Am I panicking a bit too early? Is it got more room, more legs to run? So, you know, think of that word there. I'm pursuing a positive risk reward strategy over a series of trades. Don't overanalyze it. And for every trade, try and create a positive risk reward because these markets are different. We have to adapt. And once we get in a trade, it may not always work for us. And we may have to all of a sudden get out quickly. And we may technically have taken profit on a kind of negative risk reward if I was to analyze it. But the interesting thing here is I've taken a profit, which is good, and I've done it for a reason because I felt maybe the market was going to flip against me and I've been smart and adaptive to the market moves. So again, don't get fixated on it and we'll go into that briefly uh, after this. So I'm going to go quickly into the, the cable chart here. As I mentioned, it's a sell trade. Um, we like the look of the dollar. We like the technical breakout 127. And there's a few other fundamental factors why I'd want to put this trade on. If I look in that box, Sterling fell 312 points. So let's zoom into that and see what potentially happened while we were trading. I got myself short at 125.80 on the 2nd of May there. I immediately looked to where my stop loss is, as I mentioned before. The break of 127 was crucial. So from a technical perspective, I definitely want to put my stop loss above there. I have to make sure it's affordable. 127.30 gives the market room in a volatile market to maybe break through on a false break and still keep me in. And the trade can hopefully continue. So I've got my trade set up there. Now, if I was to jump in and take my profit, as I mentioned in the first instance at 125.05, as I said, you know, you're not going to go poor if you, if you take profit. But if you were to do that far too quickly on too many occasions, and clearly two or three of them you got taken out up there at 127.30, your risk reward is all of a sudden under pressure and you've got to get more trades right than wrong. So why not have a little bit of patience? Let this play through. You've got your stop loss in place. It's affordable. And look, we let the market run. Now, yes, it went in our face a little bit and we suffered a little bit of pain, but our stop loss is still in place. It's still affordable. We've earned more information by staying in that trade a bit longer. And unless there's any particular reason fundamentals have changed for us to get out of it, let's ride it. Bang. We get that nice dip in our favor. 124.30, we can take some profit. Now, I would consider taking some profit here because I've seen a nice down move and I want to capture that because it may be an exhausted down move and we may then see the market you know, slow down after that. And we do see it even though it continues in a downward trend. Would I take profit on that? Of course. Um, and I'm creating a kind of neutral risk reward. But again, I've let it run and it's gone in my favor. So I'm helping this market work for me and I'm letting my trade breathe a little bit. Ultimately, if I'd have held on a little bit longer and held my nerve a little bit longer, I could have created that two to one risk reward and taken profit down there at 122.75. I would have been lucky because I would have picked somewhere near the bottom and that's not always going to happen. But you can see if you create this mindset, you maybe let a trade run a little bit further and you can get those rewards. You get a couple of these in the bag and then you can afford to get some wrong. So hopefully that helps um, showcase you know, what you can do if you let this mindset keep you in it. Just on this last page, two key points. As I said, there is no set formula. Don't try and aim for two to one on every trade or 1.5 to one on every trade because I don't want it to you know, get hung up on it and you might inhibit your trading by following these fixed parameters. The market, you have to be adaptable to a changing market. So be conscious of negative risk reward on too many trades. And you may find that when you evaluate trades that all of a sudden, you know, you take a look and you seem to be taking profit. Even if you're a short-term trader, 
uh, and you're jobbing the market, you take profit after every five points, but you don't stop loss yourself out for 10 points. You're going to create a negative risk reward, and that's only going to have a negative effect on your bank account and your trading account. So a mindset, I'd like you to think about it while you structure trades, and maybe it'll help you when you evaluate as well.